Fabio, uh, DZI Shoes, and I'm the marketing director of the company and a co-founder. And, and I'm Shane and I'm the product designer and uh, we started DZR together in 2010. The idea came from, from Shane many years ago and nobody really believed in this, uh, in this combination of a, a sneaker and a cycling shoe. I think it was just a need, you know, when I was in the office, I had all these friends that used to cycle to the office. They had SPDs on their bikes. I thought it made sense to make something that was casual, but also performance oriented. <laughs> a normal shoe um, has a fairly flexible sole, and a bike shoe has usually some kind of a reinforcement shank. Yeah, the cleats uh, that we have at the bottom of the shoe, that's an option. You can cut off the, the outsole and attach the, the cleat and then you're going to be completely attached to the pedals and in that area the shoes are particularly stiff and so they transfer a lot of power. So the design process is actually different depending on what kind of a company you're in. If you're in a small company, um, like for us, it can be a little bit less formal and less structured, but you get a briefing um, from the marketing or from product managers and basically it gives you um, price points, kind of a general direction for the type of market and then uh, maybe perhaps materials or colors or some sort of basic directions and then you go crazy. You start brainstorming, you sketch, you maybe go out for a walk and go to some stores or look at some magazines and get some ideas. And then uh, from the sketch, you bring them into renderings and you do your presentation. So the shading will add a little bit of depth into the lacing, to the heel cup. After the renderings, you go to prototypes where you actually make a 3D model and you choose specific materials, you work on the pattern. We actually have our own prototyping facility in China and we were really close. I mean, I'll get down there on the sewing machine with them sometimes. After the prototype, you make your refinements. Usually there's around three or four um, cycles of refinements and changes. Yeah. All right, guys. We did the jet lag in all black. Yeah, in all black. Nice, huh? Yeah. So simple. Okay, so now here's the question. Black with brown or black with black? I just think black and brown is generally a men's fashion thing. Oh, we'll, we'll search some more for women's. I think I don't I'm not convinced about this. I love that our job is actually to bike. You have to use the product to know what you're trying to invent. I was a professional uh, rider before, a cyclist, and and in the meantime I was at university studying architecture, so I have a kind of a technical background. I can sketch, I can use my, my you know my drawing to explain and, and you know communicate with designers. I actually went, for, went to school for product design over an art center in LA. But before that, I was an engineer, so I always like to build things. I also like to do a lot of crafts and painting and art. And so it kind of just was a perfect melt. I find math is still very useful. From planning out our inventory to how we're gonna lay out our warehouse space, we need to figure out what percentage of the product is made out of this leather, what percentage is made out of this leather. And uh, you know, I've, I've used a lot of mathematical equations to figure this stuff out. In my previous jobs I had in the sport industry, I was like, product development and I kind of decided to learn something new and get into this uh, marketing adventure which is good for me because I, yeah, I'm kind of a social person. There's all different types of designers. I've seen people who are fantastic communicators and they're sort of mediocre sketchers. Oftentimes at like groups like this, um, they don't have the ego of being so brilliant that they can work together with somebody else and so that also can bring up uh, amazing ideas. It was possible because of our passion for, for cycling and I'm biking with my products, which is exciting because basically you have an idea, you know what you need, and then you create it. You're going to be able to touch your, your ideas and they, they become real. Yeah, there's always somebody who thinks your idea is not going to work. <laughs> I think that's probably the hardest part about getting started with a product is you know, have the confidence to just keep going forward.